Okay, so now we know that we can put any code we want in here and it's going to be executed on the system. So let's have another look now on the statement. So the statement says select star from account where username is equal to the username that we put here and password is equal to the password that we put there. Let's see if we can use that to log in without using a password, without even knowing the password. And I'm going to be doing that with the admin. So with the admin, we're going to, the username is going to be admin. And I don't know what the password is for the admin. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put anything. So nothing really, any, any random password. And in the code, what I should run here, we were doing and one is equal to one and or stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do or instead of and. And I'm going to say one is equal to one. So what's our code is going to be once I run this, once I inject this, this is going to go in here, like we were doing before. So our code is going to look like this. So it's going to be select star from accounts where username is equal to admin. And password is equal to AAA. Now this is wrong. Or one is equal to one, which is right. So Anytime you have an or, if the or condition is right, everything is right. That's the way or statement works. So select star from accounts where username is equal to admin. Okay, username is equal to admin. And password is equal to IAA. That's wrong. Or one is equal to one. Okay, I'll accept that. And then it's actually going to execute it and let us log into the admin without even knowing the password for the admin. So let's try to inject this now. And as you can see, I was able to log in as admin and monkey is the signature for the admin. Now bypassing logins can be done in so many ways, uh, depending on the code that's written on the page and depending on the way you want to do it and how you're imagining the code. In a lot of the cases, when you put the single quote here, you won't see this message. Sometimes you do see it, which makes your job so much easier. If you don't, then you kind of need to guess what it looks like. So I'm going to show you another example of bypassing. Instead of injecting the code like this, the admin parameter is actually injectable as well. As you've seen when I put the single quote, the admin parameter is injectable exactly the same way as the password. So we can inject code in the username as well. And what I'm going to do now, so let's have a look on this. And I'm just going to reset it to the way it would usually look like. So you'd have... And the username and the password are the fields that you, whatever you put in here are going to be substituted in the username and the password. So let's try to inject something in the username. And what I'm going to say is I'm going to say username is equal to admin. And then I'm going to close the quote myself. And then I'm going to add a comment. So my statement, when I run this statement, it's going to look like this. And I'm actually just going to copy it here. And when I inject, when I put this code in here in, the, in my name, it's going to inject that in there. So this is what the code is going to look like. It's going to select star from accounts where username is equal to admin. I close the quote myself here using this right there. And then I'm adding a comment. So basically all of this is not even going to be executed. So the code is going to be this. It's going to be select star from accounts where username is equal to admin. And it's going to let me log in without even entering anything in the password. So let's do this. I'm going to put my username as admin. And I close the quote and add a comment. And then you can put any password you want really. I'm just going to put number one. And I'm going to log in. And as you can see, I managed to log in as admin. So again, in, this is black box testing, so you don't really see the code. In many cases, you want to be playing around with it and see how it works with you. But the main thing is you want to test if the SQL injection exists. And you'd use that using the method we showed you in the previous video. So try a single quote, try the AND statement, uh, try a true AND statement, so 1 is equal to 1, and then a false AND statement, so 1 is equal to 0 or 2 is equal to 0. And if they work as expected, then your target has an SQL injection and you can start playing around with it.